Hey everyone, I'm Stacy, the 911 Stitcher. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch and crafting like punch needle crochet quilting. Today is Wednesday, August 4th, 2021. This is video number 70. Now this is a special video. This isn't my normal YouTube video where I talk about all things crafting. I talk a lot about cross stitch. I show new releases. I show things that I've been working on. This video is a little bit different. This is a special video for beginning cross stitchers and those like me who returned to cross stitch after a lot of years and found that there was some big changes that were made back from when I did it years ago. So I hope you enjoy this video. We're going to talk about fabric, cross stitch fabric. Now check out my previous beginning returning to cross stitch video. That was video number 66. Go back and watch that because I cover all kinds of random things about cross stitch and it's more of an intro to cross stitch. Check that video out. Now today, again, we're gonna talk about flaw, uh, fabric, all kinds of things about fabric, dyeing fabric. How do you measure fabric? What do these counts mean? 18 count, 32 count, what does this all mean? We're gonna talk about it. But first, I wanna announce the giveaways from video number 66. We had four of them, four beginning cross stitchers. And I had some charts. I also had a piece of fabric. So let's get started with the giveaways first, since you have been waiting a long time. Chart number one was called Bee Virtues by Country Cottage Needleworks. I have a winner of the bee chart. I will mail it to you. Leslie Bruning, and I'll show your name here. I'm happy, Leslie, that you won. I'll be sending it to you as soon as I hear from you. You've won the bee chart. Giveaway number two was the animal chart and your keyword in the comments down below was animals. The winner of the animal chart is Susan Silver. And I'll show your winning uh, comment here. Next, we had Autumn by Trellis and Time. That's such a cute chart. I, this is one of my favorites. And the winner of this chart is Harriet Foshi. Congratulations, Harriet. Get a hold of me and I will mail you your chart. My email, you guys, I forgot to mention, stacer5 at AOL.com. It's S-T-A-C-E-R number five at AOL.com. I'll put that down in the notes below, in the video notes below. The fabric, I had some really pretty fabric. It looks like clouds. It is Blue Whisper 14 Count Ada, thanks to Sandra's Stitch Stash. This fabric goes to Rose. Franson, congratulations, Rose. Contact me and I will mail you your fabric. Okay, let's get started on talking about fabric. You're gonna have questions. Feel free to write down your questions. Send them to me via email or send them to me on comments below. I will answer you and I'll also go over it on the next video for beginners, which is gonna be thread. Now in my last video, we talked about kitting up, finding a chart, kitting it up yourself, which means finding fabric, finding threads, or buying a kit. A buying a kit is just as good. It's so nice to be able to have your chart, threads, and fabric all ready to go and just start stitching on it. You can do that. Say you get a kit though and you think, I really don't like this fabric. I'd like to change it to something I saw online. You can do that. That's the great thing is, is there's so many choices. And it's all based on preference. Do you want to stitch on Ada? Do you want to try linen? Do you want to work on perforated paper? So let's start with Ada cloth. We're going to talk about that. That's probably the best choice for beginning cross stitchers is 14 count Ada cloth. Now it goes lower. I believe there's 10 count, 6 count. What does this mean? What does count mean when you have a piece of fabric? So like this fabric here is 18 count. So what does this mean? I see the squares. There's all kinds of squares. They're much smaller than 14 count. But so what does that mean, the count? What this means is when you find something as far as cross stitch fabric that you really like and you hear that word count, 14 count, what it means is if you were to take a ruler, let's see, here we go. If you take a ruler, put it up against the edge or maybe even the very first square. Uh, let's do it this way. Put it up against the first square that you can count. Now you could put a straight pin on the number one 
or just count how many squares are in between until you get to one inch. There should be 14 of them if you're using 14 count. So think of it this way. There are 14 squares in this inch. That is 14 count fabric. Now, 18 count, 20 count, the number's getting bigger. What does this mean? This means, okay, now there's 18 of them. The squares are getting smaller. So try and think of it in opposite. The higher the count fabric, the smaller the square. So try and think of it as like a one inch. You're now smashing in 18 squares, 20 squares. So your squares are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So start with 14 count. Now see what you think if you can read the holes, if you can see your squares, start making your X's. Remember the only rule in cross stitch is that you need to make your X's all in the same direction. Doesn't matter how you make the X, but once you decide if you wanna go up, top left and go across, do you wanna start bottom right and make your X, whichever way, stick with that way of making your X so that way, your top X all looks the same and it all looks uniform. It looks really nice. Don't change the way you make your X or the direction of how you make your X because then it looks real sloppy. So just don't forget that. So 14 count is what I recommend starting with. The holes are nice and big. This example here of the giveaway fabric happens to be 14 count. You can actually see the X's when I put it up like this, I mean, you can see the squares because it's pretty clear. 14 count is a great, great starting piece. 14 count Ada. Now, a, there's lots of different brands of actual fabric. I, my favorite is Zweigart. How do you know you have a piece of Zweigart? What does that even mean? It's a German-based company. They make the fabric and then different companies buy it and then use the, they dye, you know, they dye the colors and they use their fabric. It's wonderful, it's sturdy, your X's look really nice. Zweigart means an orange line on the selvage. So on the edge of the fabric, you're gonna see an orange line. You know that's a Zweigart base is what they call it. So Zweigart sold their bolt of fabric to someone and they dyed it really pretty like this. Anyway, Zweigart base, I love it, orange line. That's what that means. So 14 count Ada, you have now found a chart. Again, you decide, you know, I'm not gonna go with a kit. I found a chart online. Say I was on one, two, three stitch. I found a really cute chart. I think I wanna go with a different color fabric. I like this fabric, but I happen to see some other fabric online and I'd like to switch it to that. You can do that. That's the great thing about kitting up your own chart. You can buy whatever fabric you want and start, say with 14 count Ada. Now on every chart, if I haven't already mentioned it, it's going to give you the size of the design. Uh, this one happens to be 52 by 96. Pay attention to that, because that's gonna be important. I'm gonna tell you something about that in a minute. So this model, this is the model, was stitched on 14 count Ada. That's just a suggestion. Say you don't want your X's to be, or your, um, your X is to be so big, maybe you wanna go up. Remember, think opposite, 14, 16, 18. Now the, the holes are gonna get a little smaller and your design is gonna get a little smaller. Say, you know, I'd really like this to be, you know, just not as big. I'd like it to be smaller. Maybe I'd like to make a little pillow out of this. Say 18 count, go up in number on count so your design is smaller. Think opposites. I hope that makes sense. Let's talk about linen for a minute. Linen is a lot softer than Ada. Linen is also, can sometimes be a little bit more uneven. You can still see the holes, especially like in my case, I have to use a magnifier I, and I'll show that in another video. But let's see, let's say I really, instead of a plain background, I want something exciting. I want something modeled, you know, I want some dye on it. I think I want to use this and it's linen. It says 30 count. So now the, the squares are really small, <laughs> but you have the choice. You can use a really pretty modeled fabric for your background. That's what makes it fun. 
So again, 30 count, it looks a little bit different. The holes are a little bit smaller. This particular linen has a slub in it. Now what's a slub? When you buy linen, it's not, sometimes it's not as even and easy to see like Ada is, but you can still see your holes and people love to stitch on it. Again, it's all about preference. Now I'm looking at this piece of linen and I'm thinking, what is a slub? I've heard that word. I'm stitching along and all of a sudden I see a line in the linen that's a little thicker than everybody else. Like maybe right here, if you can see that. Sometimes when it's close to the camera, it's a little hard to see. When you come across a little pe a line like this right here and it's thicker than every other line, that's a slub. <laughs> and you stitch over it, it's not a big deal. You just stitch over it and in the end, they all work out to be even anyway. So they're a little frustrating though because sometimes you can't see the hole. I'm gonna show two pictures of slubs. One of them's a little blurry and one of them's very exaggerated. So you know what I'm talking about when I talk about a slub. You're stitching along and all of a sudden you see like a little dot of excess material or excess something I tend to stitch over it. You don't see it. And again, you come up to a slub, you just do your cross stitch like normal. It's not a big deal. That's linen. It's a little bit, um, I don't wanna say uneven. It's just, a. you run into a little bit of um, marks on the fabric maybe that you're not used to, or like I said, dots. Thickening is a better word, thickening on the material. Just stitch over it, you're gonna be fine. Now other videos, I think there was a video that showed what, how to remove a slub. I've never done that. I just stitch over it, my cross stitch looks great. You just have to make sure you don't miss a hole because sometimes when there is a thickening of the, of the thread, the hole is really small. I always put my linen tight on a hoop or a Q-snap. It opens up the holes a little bit more so you can really see them. But sometimes the hole is right up against that slub. And like I said, just use the hole, just keep stitching and it'll, it'll, it'll all work out. So we talked about fabric count. What does that mean? Think opposite, the higher the count, the smaller the square. Now, do people stitch using that little square over, you know, just one? Yes, they do. Say you get to 28 count and now your, small, your, your squares are super tiny. What this means is, you will hear the term over two threads. They will actually use four squares. So if you're looking at a piece of, I'm gonna use this as an example. If you're using this, you're actually using four squares. That is over two threads. It, it, this is kind of confusing. There's a lot of good videos out there on how to stitch using over two method. And people, it's, again, it's all preference. Eight o'clock, you're going to just use one single square right there, one single square. But linen stitchers, when you get to 28 count and above, a lot of times they will use four squares, two and two. What this means is, now I like to use, instead of counting my threads, I go by holes. It's easier for me, my brain just doesn't see the threads. I like to see the holes. So when you get to higher count fabrics, my favorite is 32 count. You're going to stitch over two threads. And again, what this means is four, four squares. And what I do, this is my secret to how I stitch on 28, 32, 40 count. Like I said, you're gonna use more holes. Diagonally three, that is my go-to for stitching on linen. <laughs> and you're like, what are you talking about? Let's see if I can show you this and have you understand. So we'll use this down here, four squares, one, two, three, four. See how diagonally there's three holes, one, two, three. One, two, three going up, one, two, three going to the right, one, two, three going down. That is four tiny, tiny Ada squares. Yeah, I hope that makes sense to you guys. That's how I stitch on linen and over two stitching. I'll try, if you guys wanna see me stitch, 
I will try and stitch it. There are, look on YouTube and do over two stitching or stitching over two. That means you're stitching diagonally three holes. It's how I do it. And a lot of, like I said, maybe some of the people that have been stitching a long time think that's not the way to do, you know, that's not the way to think. It's the way to do it. It's just the way my brain thinks. I like to use holes. So when I do my fabric, like I said, if you want to see me do it, I'll explain it a little better. But over two stitching, when people say, well, you have to count the threads, to me, that's difficult. I don't know why. But like I said, four squares. I'm going to color these in. Where's my glasses? Four squares. Let's see if this works a little bit better. Now you've got your four squares, okay? One, two, three, four. When you're stitching over two, it's diagonally three holes. One, two, three. Then go up and make your X. One, two, three, and go on to the next one. Here we go. One, two, three. That's where you're gonna start. Go diagonal, one, two, three holes one two three to make your next x so it really if you're looking at eight o'clock you're using one two three four little tiny squares for linen stitching again one two three and then like i said i hope that makes sense to you guys to me that's just how i do it when i'm stitching i like to to determine my over two stitches by holes go diagonally three up three Include the one you're already in. One, two, three. Go diagonally three. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Maybe I, I kind of overkilled it a little bit. But anyway, that's over two stitching. So when you get to 28 count, 32 count, 40 count, people like to stitch using more squares. And they go over two threads or diagonally three holes. And... Some people, now when you do a full coverage, say you're doing this big, big piece, some people actually like to do 28 count using one tiny, tiny little square to stitch on. So there are people that just stitch on that one little square instead of going diagonally three holes. I hope that makes sense. So when you're stitching on linen, another term you're going to hear is over one stitching, which just like I showed you a few minutes ago, when you're stitching on a very high count with lots and lots of holes and it's really tiny and your little square is so tiny you can barely see it, sometimes when you get a sampler, if you find a sampler that you like and you've got your typical border, you've got your seams and you've got lettering, you're gonna hear over one stitching. Now, what I just told you a few minutes ago is people use more holes or more squares. They go over two threads, diagonally three holes. You're using four squares. What this means is when you do the lettering, over one is over one little square. Really, in sampler terms, it means over one thread. I think squares, that's my, I think holes and I think squares. So, you are stitching little over one little tiny square to make your lettering in the sampler. And the rest of the sampler is over two. You're using diagonally three holes. That's four squares of a cross stitch. That's how you're doing your whole samplers over two. In the lettering only of a sampler, you'll see what does over one stitching mean. You are stitching over one tiny little square using one thread. I hope that all makes sense. I can go over it again and actually show you when I'm stitching if, if that will help you guys. There's lots of tutorials on YouTube about it. I hope uh, you can understand over two stitching a little bit better. Like I said, my mind diagonally three holes, up three holes. That's just my mind. <laughs> okay, let's go on and talk about how do you measure fabric? So again, I showed you earlier the stitch count. Here it is. It is 52 wide by 96 high. That's how many stitches high and wide for this design. So obviously this is a higher design than it is wide. So you're gonna need a cut of fabric and say you're gonna switch to a different fabric. You want something, say you wanna stitch it on this. This is called ancient, it's dyed 
and you want just something totally different than what it came that either what it came with or what it shows. How am I going to figure out my piece of fabric? It's easy. Now you can do the math. You could take 52 by 96 and divide it by the number of count of fabric. So say you've got a really nice piece of 14 count fabric. You're going to divide this number and this number by 14. That's going to show you your size of your finished cross stitch. Who wants to do math? I don't. <laughs> I don't want to do the math. I want to make sure I get it right, especially if I'm doing a big piece. So stitch calculators are your friend. They are. I use them, I kid you not, almost every day. I love my stitch calculator. I'll show you some websites. My favorite is crossstitch.com. I'm going to show a picture of it here. Now on this, crossstitch.com, it doesn't matter if it's Ada, it doesn't matter if it's linen, it's going to calculate your size. I absolutely love this. I worship the stitch, stitch calculator. <laughs> okay, take a look at the calculator. I'm going to put it up for a long time while I'm talking. Take a look and see. Now remember, remember I told you 52 by 96. You're going to punch that into your calculator. See where it says height and it says by and by. At the very top, it shows put your stitch count. You're going to put that in, those numbers. Next, it asks, what count of fabric are you using? I'm going to use 14 count. Put the number 14 in. Next, it says, how many threads are you going over? And again, now this was just remember one thread is Ada. Two is for linen. It always gives you that little note next to it. So choose Ada if you're using 14 count. Next. And again, that's if you're using just one little square on your Ada, you're going to click one for Ada cloth. It'll tell you right next to it. So put one. Next, you have to remember when you do a cross stitch. Let's see if I have an example. Here's a big example, which was I was going to show later. Remember when you do a cross stitch, don't start your cross stitch at the very, very edge. You need to leave a little bit of room to work with and you need a border. So in my case, I wanted a big border for framing because I'm, I'm going to frame this. Okay. Now keep in mind, you need to leave border here. You need to room, leave room here. You need to leave room here, here, and here. Now say for instance, you're calculating and you're gonna do the math on your own. Keep in mind, if you're gonna use two inches here and two inches at the bottom, that's a total of four inches. Don't forget, don't just use two inches thinking, okay, yeah, I've used two inches on the border. This is two, this is two, that's four. This is two and two, two over here and two over here. So two inches around, that's going to give you a nice border around your piece. So basically what I'm trying to say is don't start your cross stitch right at the very, very top of your fabric because then you don't have any room to frame it. You don't have any room to really turn it into a pillow. Move it down a little bit. The standard size is two to three inches, two to three inches. So... That's your next choice on the fabric calculator. I'll show you here. Account for the border. How much room? It asks you, do you want two inches? Do you want three inches? It will account for the border all the way around your piece. Easy. It does it for you. Then you click calculate. Yay, it's done it for you. <laughs> it will show how big your actual stitches are going to be, you know, how big this is going to come out. It'll show, and then it shows fabric size. It tells you what size of fabric to buy, where everything, including your border, is included. It's wonderful. It's so easy. It also, Eve, if you look at the very bottom, it'll say, how many strands do you of thread? It'll give you a suggestion. Now, 14 count. I like three threads. I like really good coverage. It might suggest two. 
that's your choice. Whatever choice of how many strands of thread you want to use is your choice. Then it gives you a suggestion for numbers of backstitching. Now, I don't use that part of the chart. I just use the calculated piece and where it shows fabric size. That's the size I buy. It's, it's a wonderful tool. Crossstitch.com, I'm going to put the link below. Yarntree.com is another one that's really good that it will automatically calculate Ada and linen. You just got to make the choice. Do you Are you stitching on Ada or are you stitching on linen? Make the choice so the computer knows. It's so easy. You just put it all in yourself. It's wonderful. Okay, let's talk about perforated paper. What is it? Why would you use it? And what kits come with perforated paper? Can you change out perforated paper? Yes. So let's talk about it first. Here's what it looks like when you buy it as a whole sheet. This is what I showed just a few minutes ago when I was doing the demonstration of over two stitching. This is actually paper, but it's thick and it's nice and sturdy. It's a little bit more rigid than a piece of cloth. And um, you have to be a little careful with perforated paper because one, it can tear and two, if you get it wet, forget it. And I know by experience by getting mine wet that it ruined my project. So like I said, it is paper. It's just thick. You can cross stitch on it. It's got holes like you can see the holes and you cross stitch just as normal as you as you do on a piece of fabric. You can see the squares here. It, very easy to see the squares. And I, use, I hold it in my hand as I stitched. You can't really use a hoop because it would crease your your paper and the crease would not come out. So I don't use a hoop in mine and I just have to hold it in hand to stitch on. And uh, 14 count is usually what it comes in, but I've heard you can also get it in 18 and 20 count. The ones that I've ordered in the past, I've gotten the, um, I believe it's 14 count. Yep, 14 stitches per inch. It's exactly what it says on the back. So like I said before, one inch, 14 stitches, that's 14 count fabric or paper. So here's what it looks like if you ever order it online. It comes in sheets of two. There's two of them in here. You can get different colors if you wanna stitch something Christmassy. Here's silver, here's red, perforated paper. And then they also sell like a cream color. And you can also get it in like this brown. Now, I had no reason at all to buy brown because I like Christmassy colors or um, what happened was the reason why I bought brown is I ruined mine. Now, here's where perforated paper comes in a kit. Mill Hill kits. If you're not familiar with Mill Hill kits, they come like this. They are adorable. They are so much fun. They are fully kitted with perforated paper. They come with beads, which that'll be another video on beading. I'll show you beading. It comes with a cute little button and it comes with thread. So Mill Hill, if you search on one, two, three stitch, you'll see a whole bunch of styles. My Mill Hill that I finished is this one, along with some small Halloween ornaments. This was my biggest one and you can see it's on the perforated paper. It has beads, it's got the little button that it came with to put him over here. It's adorable. This was a lot of fun to do. And in the back, this is actually a Mill Hill frame. You don't have to use a Mill Hill frame. You can buy any frame and make it something really cute. But the, if you do buy a Mill Hill, Mill Hill frame, keep in mind there is no glass. And the backing, this is something I bought. I had to put the cardboard in myself because there was no backing. So it's just frame and it really come, it came out really cute. I'll show it up close. So you can see the perforated paper and you can also, say you stitch on it and you don't like it, you can switch to fabric. Just read the chart as if you were stitching any other chart and you can use, maybe a 16 count would be better since the beads are gonna be on it, but they, these are a lot of fun. So these are called Mill Hill kits. I have a lot of them. These are a few, another example, an Easter one. Here is a Halloween one. This comes with black perforated paper. There's the button, there's the threads. 
They are so fun. So I highly recommend Mill Hill kits to try perforated paper or switch to fabric. Now they have different sizes. This is a little tiny one, a little ornament. Now here's my story about it. I made this ornament. It was on perforated paper. What you do is you cut it out to one square right up against your stitching. You don't want to cut it out. You don't want to cut the paper out so close to where your stitching is or your stitches will start falling off. So here's some more examples of some really small Mill Hill kits, ornaments, and then the little bit bigger ones that, uh, here's another Christmassy one. These are all just so fun. This perforated paper is also dark in color. And again, there's all the beads and everything that comes with it. Now perforated paper, you cannot get it wet. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I made a little Dracula. He's so cute. And two times, I two different ornaments I have messed up. One of them, the Dracula, when I was putting the backing, you can put felt on the back to cover up your the back of your work. When you cut it out, you cut out the little ornament like this, cut, cut all around it, and then you want something on the back to cover your stitches. I just put a piece of felt. Well, I put too much glue. And because I put too much glue, it saturated the perforated paper through the stitches and the whole thing just started falling apart. So it's just a piece, think of it as a piece of paper. It really is paper, but it's thick. So sometimes you might not think of it as paper. It's got a really neat feel to it. I like how it feels, but just remember perforated paper, you would want to protect it just like a piece of paper. Don't get it wet. Another Mill Hill kit, it, it may have even been this one now that I think about it. I finished it, or no, I had not finished it. I was working on it and I took, like I said, just pretend it's this size right here. That's the size that comes in the kit. I took it and I put it on an end table that had a glass that was on it. Well, you know how glasses can leave a ring? I, for some reason, I didn't use a coaster and there was a ring of wetness on the table. So I set my, my thing down and it was a kit just like this. I set it down and I didn't, didn't see that ring of, of water and it completely uh, soaked it and ruined it. You can't fix it once it's ruined. So I had to go on one, two, three stitch and order these sheets and they're cheap. They're super cheap. I had to order a new piece, cut out one, a new one and start all over again. So anyway, I just wanted to show you what perforated paper is used for. Some like it, some don't. And I really do. I like it a lot. I like how sturdy it is in the frame. And um, I obviously have more Mill Hill kits to do along the way. Here's another Mill Hill kit. This is an Easter one. And this came with yellow, like a yellow colored perforated paper. Like I said, they come in packs of two. Mill Hill, I mean, uh, perforated paper, you can only do X's and half stitches, which is a half a X. You can't do fractional stitches like a quarter stitch or three quarter stitch because you're going to have to puncture the piece of paper. You can't do that. So these Mill Hill kits are all straight X's or half cross stitches. And again, 14 count. You can't wash it. That's so that's pretty obvious. <laughs> but they make really cute ornaments. They make great bookmarkers. They make cards that are really pretty. So try perforated paper. Give it a ch give it a chance and see what you think about it. Okay. Needle size. Let's talk about needles for a minute. You've got these great fabric counts. You've got 14 count. You've got 40 count, which is super small, super small holes, super small, but fun to stitch on. I would give it a try. Don't rule it out, but you might need a magnifier. <laughs> I do. Don't rule out the higher counts. Give it a try. It's a, it's a lot of fun, <clears throat> but <clears throat> the higher count you go, your needles are going to change. You're probably thinking, 14 count, what size of a needle am I going to need? Again, you're thinking opposites again, just like I was talking to you about stitch count. Same with needle size. The smaller the needle, the higher the number. So as you are stitching on, say, 14 count, the most popular needle, it, well, for a cross stitch, you're going to want to use a tapestry needle. Most popular sizes, usually anywhere between 24, 26, 28 for cross stitching on 14 to 40 count linen. For the lower count, say 14 count, say 
16 count, the holes are bigger. You can use a bigger needle, which means I would say probably a 24, maybe even a 26. Here's the needle sizes here. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm losing my voice. Here's pictures of needles. Now, as you can see, the higher the, ne the needle number, the smaller the needle. So it's like opposite. <laughs> So for lower counts, like 14 count, 16 count, you're going to want to use a 24 or a 26. Then the higher you go, like say you're using 40 count, say you're using um, even 18 count. Sometimes people suggest using a size 28 needle, which is smaller. Because you don't want to use a big needle on a small count of fabric and makes your hole so big when you're going in and out. And you also don't want to use a little teeny tiny needle, like a 28, to go through, say, a 14, because it's like so loose, it's not comfortable. Your needle just falls right through. So like I said, 24 works out pretty good for the lower numbers, like 14 count and 16 count. 26, that's what I use a lot of, is 26 for, say, 16 count, 18 count. Then you start getting higher counts of linen like way up high, say 32 count or even 40 count, 46 count, you're going to want to use say a 28 count or a 28 size needle. So like I said, I'll show you the picture again, the higher the number, the smaller the needle. Another choice of needles. Now let's talk about brands of needles. There's lots of them. There's John James, there's Bowen. My favorite are Pat Carson's. They come like this in a little thing and it gives you the size and inside the needle is three different needles to try. Sometimes when you shop for needles you'll find bulk where you, they sell them in bulk where you can buy like 20 needles. I wouldn't I like just choosing a couple needles to start with because there are definitely preferences in needles. Different styles I'm not I, I've tried Bowen they're not my favorite. I love John James. I love Pat Carson. Now, other people love the Bowens. They swear by them. I love Pat Carson. That's my go-to for needles. So just look online. One, two, three stitch has needles. My favorite place to go is sandrastitchstash.com. This is where I got my Pat Carson needles and I got two or three of them in the case. I think it's two because I want to try them first and see before I buy a big bulk pack of needles. Give different brands a try. Um, there's also Sullivan's. Sullivan's are a different type of needle and these are great. These are called ball tip needles. I'm gonna show a picture. Actually, there is a picture right here. See the ball? This is an actual needle you can stitch with that has a tiny little ball at the end of it, just like this right here. And people love them, the ball tip needle Sullivan's. I believe you can get them on one, two, three stitch. These are great to stitch with. Give them a try. This happens to be a size 28. So they're smaller, they're shorter. So again, you would want to use a 28 on a higher count fabric. 14 count, uh, 16 count, I would use a 24 or a 26. Okay, we've talked about needles. We talked about the Sullivan's ball tip needles. We talked about the fabric calculator, which is awesome. I'm going to put links below for those calculators. Let's talk about... We talked about slubs on a piece of linen, the thickening of a thread. You just stitch, I just stitch over them. It all works out anyway. It looks really good. Let's talk about fabric dyeing. Can you dye your own fabric? Yes. Now again, this is a great chart. This is a perfect example of a very plain fabric on the back and it looks great. But what if we switch to vintage country mocha? and gave it a little bit, if you can see, let's see if I can get a good picture of, there's different swirls of different color. It's called modeling. There's different colors and of modeling in the fabric to give it just a little bit of a look. I'm gonna highly recommend Vintage Country Mocha. See up close, you can see the different swirls of brown in here. This is such a great fabric to use vintage country mocha to start with for your first dyed fabric. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorites. Then 
You can also choose a much more drastic, much more extreme fabric. Say you want some Halloween, you have a Halloween chart and you wanna get really crazy, how about some murky? Look at this fabric. Now we're getting into dyed fabrics where you get into some pretty awesome looking colors instead of just a plain background. I'll show you some more. We've got another one called Meyer by Picture This Plus. Now let's talk about brands. You've got Picture This Plus, Coloring Cotton. You've got all these great, great brands. 123 Stitch has a wonderful selection. Here's Meyer, another great Halloween fabric. You can see it's been dyed. Safe to stitch on. Your stitches are all going to be just fine. You can buy linen like this one. This is a darker, more modeled Actually, when you open it up, it's got a lot of modeling in it. Sometimes you don't want a lot of modeling. Sometimes you just want more of a plain, very slight swirls and stuff. So just take a look. One, two, I'm gonna point you to 123stitch.com. Take a look at all the different fabrics they have and decide, here's another one. That's a great color, Very a lot less modeling, maybe not as extreme as the Halloween ones I showed. There's just so many choices, so many great, great fabrics out there. Again, this is more extreme. And you don't have to go that extreme. You can just go very slight. This is a very slight modeling. Not as extreme, but what a great effect it gives on the back of your cross stitches. I'm gonna show you some examples of some pretty extreme fabric. Here's one. Oh, no, this is actually not too extreme. I received a kit one time and I looked at the fabric and I thought, I don't like this fabric. <laughs> it had, it's bright green and it's got purple in it. And I just thought it was ugly. And I thought, oh, just use it. They use, they gave it to you in the kit. It's dyed. It's, it's going to come out fine. Well, it's a Halloween piece. And check this fabric out. Now take a look. There's a lot of purple in it that got cut out, but you can see the purple. And when I pulled it out originally, there was some parts of it. I chose to use the part of the fabric that didn't have as much purple in it. So this this cross stitch finish is an example of using dyed fabric and making it into something really cute, like that witch's hat, and making it into something really cute using dyed fabric. Let me get you another example. This is a fabric I dyed myself. That was the next thing I was gonna say is, can you dye your own fabric? Yes, you can. And it's so much fun. Now here's one I dyed. This was the very first piece that I dyed. It came out okay. It wasn't my favorite color, but I made it into something really cute. This was my first one that I dyed. I took a piece of white Ada and I used Rit dye and dyed it myself. Now there are some really great tutorials, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. And I made this, or my finisher made it into a really cute uh, display for Halloween. So you can see there's not much modeling at all. Maybe a little bit right in here under the moon and maybe a little bit right here, but I wanted something a little less modeled because the chart itself is busy. And so that's one that I dyed myself. <clears throat> Let's talk about another style that you can get on 123 Stitch. It's called Pettit Point. Now, isn't this beautiful? You can do a cross stitch on this as well and make it into something really pretty. Let me grab a finish for you and show you. Okay, so this is called Pettit Point polka dots. And you're thinking, how do you stitch on polka dots? There's holes, there's little holes in them. And you just keep stitching and just make your X's and it can turn it into something really cute. This is gonna be an ornament for my animal tree. And this is just an example of what it looks like stitching on. And you can see, I went right through the dot and you can see the holes. So Pettit Point is another example of a printed type of fabric to use. Another printed fabric is something like this where it has a design on it, like snowflakes. This is actually printed, safe to use for cross stitch and you can make a really cute design on it. Um, I think this might, is this printed? This is called Ancient Stones by the Primitive Hair I ordered. And I wanna say it might have a printed picture on it. 
Let's see, it might just be color. No, it's just print, it's just color. But sometimes they'll have like old maps as a background. I know that there's one fabric a lot of people used for a patriotic piece that had the US Constitution stamped real lightly on the back. So you could see the Constitution, the you know, in writing, but you can still stitch over it and it looks really great as a backdrop. <clears throat> Here's one that I did on this piece, I believe is called Haunted by Picture This Plus Fabric. So you can see darker fabric, there's some slight modeling and it gives a really great effect on your cross stitch. That's why I love having the choice of different fabrics. Really, really cute, it came out. It, I love that it's on a cauldron. We'll go over finishing on another video, but I want you to take a look at the fabric to see what it actually looks like on a cross stitch. Now dyeing fabric yourself, you can do it. It's a lot of fun. Just get some scrap pieces of Ada or linen or whatever you'd like to stitch on. You can do coffee and tea is an option. I'm gonna link some good videos. Priscilla and Chelsea of Stitching with the Housewives gives a great tutorial or just search on YouTube, coffee dyeing, coffee fabric dyeing for cross stitch. Lots of choices will come up, but coffee and tea is a very popular, um, let's see if I have one here. I don't have one by offhand, but coffee and tea, what you do is you take a piece of cross stitch, put in some coffee, some people like to use the the pre-packaged coffees that come with like a filter over it or like a cotton piece over the coffee. Um, they put it in boiling water or hot, really, really hot water. They put tea bags and they dye their fabric to, and they scrunch it up, dye their fabric, and then they actually bake it at, I think it's 200 degrees, scrunch it up on a, on a cookie sheet, bake it for just a little bit, and then take it out and see. The great thing is when you dye your fabric and you're not happy with it, you can dunk it back in. You can re-dye it with another color. You can use writ dye. You can use all, I've known people to use carrots. Believe it or not, carrots stain. And strawberries, blueberries. I've seen people use fruit to give a multicolor look. It's fun. You just be creative. I knew of someone that used hot chocolate. It came out not as not as like defined as coffee does sometimes, but it's so fun to just experiment with dyes, with natural products like fruit. Um, someone used, trying to think, beets. Someone used purple beets and dyed their fabric really pretty. And I said, like I say, the great thing is that if it doesn't come out that great and you're not like, you don't really like it. Now beets is a pretty stark, you know, pretty stark color. Um, Rit dye makes a, it's, you, you put it in a little cap full in and it takes a lot of the color out. You can re-dye it. If you coffee tea dye something, you don't like it, you can always re-dye it again. So that's the great thing is if it doesn't quite come out, maybe it's a little too light, you want it darker, just dunk it back in. So the tutorials I wanna tell you about, Stitching with the Housewives has a great coffee tea tutorial and a writ dye tutorial. I'm gonna link them both below. Using a jar, you know those jars you buy at the store where they're about this tall, what they do is they scrunch their fabric down into the jar and they pour the color on top and they leave it, then they pull it out, rinse it out, and it gives a really great effect. I have one that I loved watching. It is, she is, uh, her videos are, uh, her floss tube is called House of Floss and Fluff. Check her out. She does a great jar tutorial. I'm gonna link that down below. The other tutorials that are a lot in, that's really interesting is ice dyeing. Now it's a different style of dyeing where people scrunch their fabric up. I believe it's wet. Some people use some salt water. I don't know a lot about the salt water, but anyway, scrunch it all up, put it on like a, oh, what are those things called? Like a cookie sheet, not a cookie sheet, where you put cookies and they cool, uh, like a baking sheet and um, you put ice on top of the fabric, pack it with ice, then you use powder dye and you go over the ice. So when it melts, it it gives this effect with the ice. Check out ice dyeing, it's, a, it's really interesting. I've not done it myself, but it looks really interesting. Okay, I also mentioned 
Oh, another thing I want to mention. Now, when you have your fabric, when do you start in the middle and when do you start on the top left? It's preference. Again, it's preference. So say you've got this piece and you want to start a cross stitch piece, but it, it all depends on the design. Now this one here, you could start it in the middle if you want to find the middle and work your way out going stitch wise, stitching out. Something like this where it's a, where there's a border even say this one even, where there's kind of a border, I will start up here, top left, and work my way out. You know, start up there and then just kind of work your way down and out. You could do that with this too, start right here and work your way out. So you're probably thinking, well, how do you know what, on your fabric, where do you start with this? I'd like a two inch border. I have a great little uh, accessory to show you. I use a corner gauge just like this. Now here you can see is this whole thing is three inches. So if you want a border of three inches on the, on the bottom and three inches on the side, this is a great gauge to use. What you do is you take your fabric like this, put your gauge up like this and make a little tiny mark right here. That is three inches top to bottom, left to right. Now say you only want two inches. If you look close, two inches is right here. What I do is I put a needle through there and just kind of make a little mark on the fabric with my needle. And that'll give you a two inch border on the top here and two inch border on the side of your fabric. Corner gauges are a great, great tool to help you if you are going to start, like say for instance on this one, say I wanted to start right here and start stitching from the corner, and I only want two inches because I don't want to waste a bunch of fabric. Three inches is good too though. I always use three actually. Um, if it's a small cross stitch, I'll use two. But this is how you start on the top left or the bottom right, whichever you want to start. I just wanted to show you how to use a corner gauge Corner gauges are just so handy. I love them. Let me use a thicker piece of fabric because this is a little, it's floppy. Anyway, I started here. As you can see, there's my fabric right here. Put the corner gauge at the very top left of your fabric. And now you can see where I started is right about two and a half inches maybe. Yeah, maybe three. I think I gave myself three inches because I started right there. Let's talk about Fabric of the Month Clubs. Fabric of the Month Clubs are a great way to build your stash or build your supply of fabric. And it's fun to receive a piece of fabric every month from a company that you really like. Now, my Fabric of the, of the Month choices are Color and Cotton and Fortnite Fabrics. They are wonderful companies, very reliable. Every month I get a piece of fabric in a different color. It's just a lot of fun. Now talking about how do you find out about different companies, you know, who sell fabric. Go on 123stitch and just put in 14 count and all of these fabrics will come up. All these designers will come up. Some of them sell privately like Fortnite Fabrics. Now I did hear Fortnite Fabrics is going to start selling at different stores as well, which is so awesome for them. But they sold privately uh, from their home, I believe. And some places like Seraphim is another really popular fabric that I love. I believe they're like a private, although they sell to different needle workshops now too. There is Week Dye Works is another one that, that sells fabric. So there's just different brands out there to check out and to try and see what you like. Sometimes some brands seem a little bit tighter. Picture this plus sometimes can be a little tight. But when I look at this picture, this plus, and I can tell PTP is picture this plus, this one's actually a little bit looser. I'm surprised because usually picture this plus can be a little bit tight, but uh, this one's actually pretty loose. So it's just about trying different brands, see what you like, see what you don't like, get some small cuts. If you don't have a local shop like I do that has really nice fabric selections, you just have to order it online. And like I said, get a small cut. This is just a small one of tw uh, 12 by 17. 
and it gives you a good size to determine whether or not you like this fabric. Do you like Picture This Plus? Maybe I'll try uh, Seraphim fabrics next. Then you have companies who are overseas that sell them, like Extu Designs. There's a new one that just came out. I can't think of his name, but he's another one out of Hungary, the country of Hungary. They sell beautiful um, cross-stitch fabric. You learn about them on Facebook. You learn about them on Instagram. So we'll, that's going to be another video that we're going to talk about is social media and cross-stitch. That one's going to be a lot of fun. I'll tell you about all kinds of different um, Facebook sites to follow and it'll be fun. So in the end, don't be afraid to try different fabrics. If you want to start with an even weave, that means it's a little bit more even, a little bit, the holes are pretty easy to see. I would start with a 28 count Lugana. Say you want to try stitching over two. You've done Ada, you've stitched on the little X's, you've made your X's on one little square on Ada. That's great fabric. I love Ada. In fact, this is Ada. The one I showed you, this happens to be Ada, 20 count Ada. I went up in count from 14. Remember it's opposite. The higher you go in numbers, the smaller your design is gonna be. So I chose 20 because I don't want this massive thing on my wall. So <laughs> I chose 20 count, it looks great. And it's Ada cloth, it's beautiful. I'm happy, I can see my holes. I'm stitching over one, I'm using one X. Remember, stitching over two, say you want to try it. Say, what do I what do I buy? 28 count Lugana is my recommendation. You can buy anything you want, you can try it. And like I said, instead of one little square, you're actually using four, diagonally three holes. Up one, skip one, go down. Go up to make your next X, go up three to find your next hole, and then go up, skip a hole, go down. That's your, how you make your X when you're stitching over two. But give it a try. Try Lugana. I love Lugana. Even Weave is great. So I mentioned the brands. I mentioned trying different things. But most of all, like I say, remember, when you find something you really like, you get to choose the fabric and make it really fun uh, to what you like. So that's all for this video. I know you might have questions. Some of it was a little confusing, I think when I was talking about over two stitching. Now I do have giveaways for this video. If you would like this pretty one, it's 14 count, easy to see holes. This one's very soft, it's not thick Ada. This is the one I showed you earlier. If you would like to be entered to win this fabric, just put your interest in, the fabric for this one is called Serene. Here's the word Serene, put your interest in this. It's like a light green color. The next one I'm going to give away is more of a thick Ada. It's a lot more stiff, but it's great to stitch on. It's 14 count Lavender Whisper. It's really pretty. It's got a little bit of modeling. It's just such a pretty one. So this is the next giveaway. Your keyword to put is lavender, if you're interested in this color. Okay, the next one I'm gonna give away is a pink color. This is 18 count. So say you've been stitching on 14 and you wanna go up in size a little bit. Give it a try, 18 count, and your word is gonna be pink. So the giveaways for today, your keyword, this one is Serene. That's the name of it, Serene. This one is Lavender. Pretty. And this one is Pink. This is a stiff Ada. If you'd like to give 18 count a try, I'll give it to, I'll give you this piece. So thanks everybody. Any questions, please email me or put in the comments below and I'll write back to you. Bye guys.